script for our assets. If we take a look at the assets in our Unreal Engine, they're all unordered and not put into folders yet. So let's change that. As we've seen before, we start by importing Unreal into our scope, then defining some instances of the Unreal classes we will use in this tutorial. Get a list of the currently selected assets and the amount of assets currently selected. In addition to that, we again want a counter to keep track of the cleaned elements. A for each loop allows us to iterate over each of the assets and get the clear text name and the class instance of that specific asset. This time we will get the asset name as a string by using the system library and the get object name method. Since we haven't defined the system lib variable here, we will add it on top at our instances and create a new instance of the system library class. In addition to the simple asset name, we also want to get the asset class. In order to get the information, we use the get class method that is inherited from the object base object. And then finally, get the actual class name as a clear text by using the systemlib.get class display name method. As always, we also want to have some logging in place so we know what's going on. Switching over to the Unreal Engine and selecting all our assets, executing our script, we can see the class name of each asset. In order to move assets in the editor, we need a destination path. In order to generate a new path, we need a parent directory. In Unreal, the root level directory is slash game. Basically, to assemble the new path, we need several different elements. But instead of just concatenating them as strings, we can use the os.path elements that will automatically put separators between the elements. For using it, however, we need to import it into our scope. The os.path.join method takes several elements and separates all of them with the default separator for the operating system you're currently on. Make sure to always comment your code because whenever you're going back and looking at your code again, it might be helpful to have some explanation on what is actually going on here. For relocating assets, we need another library which is called the editor asset library so we add a new variable to the instance of unreal classes and instantiate the editor asset library we can then use this editor asset library to call a specific method and if we check the documentation for the element we're searching for which is called rename loaded assets. We can use the search function here. We can instantly see the parameters it expects us to give it. So it takes a source asset and a destination asset path. Using this knowledge back in our code editor, we use the rename loaded asset method, pass it the asset and the new path in order to rename and relocate our asset. Once again, we increment our clean counter and adjust the logging to our needs. The final logging statement will tell us how many elements have been cleaned and moved into their respective folders. Switching back to the Unreal Engine, we can now do a test run with one of the elements. We run into an error that tells us that our rename method needs an asset instead of an asset name, so let's change that. Go back to Unreal and retry our script. This time we don't get an error warning and see that it's cleaned up into its respective folder. To make the script a little bit more resilient, let's add a try catch statement in order to avoid some errors.
Should we encounter any more problems or errors, we want to know what the error message looks like and what we can do to resolve this issue. After finishing the logging, we want to move back to Unreal Engine and try it out with the, all the other remaining assets as well. After a short wait time, we should see that all the assets have now been cleaned up into their respective folders. One additional feature we can add here is that we don't always use the parent folder or this root directory slash game, but we want to use the actual parent folder of the currently selected element. In order to avoid errors, we need to make sure that the number of selected assets is bigger than zero because we will access the first element of that list. The editor asset library gives us another method called the get path name for loaded asset. Using this, we can get the full path to the provided asset. So as mentioned before, what we can do here is we can just use the first element of our selected asset list. The path will be the full qualified path to the specific asset, so what we want to have is the parent directory, which means that we have to remove the very last section of that specific path. The OS library provides us with a method called dirname, which just accepts a path and it will strip away the very last element. So for example, if the path of our asset is game slash asset slash new material, it will strip away the new material and result in a slash game slash asset path. Moving back to the Unreal Engine, we can now execute our script in a subfolder called cleanup and we can see that it still puts everything into the respective folders. This concludes the creation of our cleanup script and provides us with even more functionality to use inside of our editor.